What is in this fish's mouth? Well, it's as bad as you think. This is a tongue-eating louse. But there are things that these creepy crawlies do that make them even worse than their name suggests. Stick around to find out. Let's clear something up first. This is technically an isopod that belongs to the crustacean class of animals. It has more in common with shrimp and crabs than it does with head lice. But it does, in fact, eat the tongue of its fish host. It all starts when a juvenile louse senses its potential host and swims up the gills of the unsuspecting fish. From there, it travels to the mouth and checks to make sure no other louse is occupying it. Then, it takes up residence by hooking onto the tongue with its legs. Last but not least, it cuts the tongue and starts feeding on the blood and mucus. Lovely. Over time, the fish's tongue begins to die due to lack of blood, and the louse takes its place. The thing is, being a parasite, the louse needs a host to survive. Even though this seems gruesome and bad for the fish, it doesn't suffer much, and the two animals can live for years together. Which kind of makes sense if you think about it. The parasitic louse wouldn't want to harm the fish, otherwise it wouldn't have anywhere to live. There's a lack of scientific research into whether the louse actually functions as the tongue, but it's been suggested the fish still uses the louse like it would its old tongue. This includes knocking it against the roof of its mouth to help push down food. The population of this parasite is unknown since it can also live inside other animals. Who knows how many are just floating in the ocean looking for their new living home? But if you do, for whatever reason, want to find one, look about two meters deep in the waters of the Atlantic or Pacific Oceans. If you're feeling bold, they can also be found down to depths of 60 meters. If you thought that the tongue and mucus eating was intriguing, the tongue-eating louse's mating ritual is where things truly get interesting. They are protandric hermaphrodites, meaning they all start off as males, but when it's time to reproduce, they can turn into females. If a male larva starts to occupy a fish's mouth, it will begin to change into a female and grow significantly bigger. This is also the time a female louse will send signals to other males to not make the gender switch. After hatching, the offspring flow out of the fish's mouth and start the cycle all over again.